Hi, it's Julie Meller, Easy Swing Coach. Today's video is how to break 90. Um, few of you uh, have, have done it, and, and there's certainly a lot of people out there who haven't done it. Um, but I'm gonna show you some hints and tips today that will enable you to start to break 90. Um, now, if we think of it logically, if we're playing a par 70, for instance, if we could shoot one over the par on each of those holes, we're gonna shoot an 88, which is broken 80. And what I wanna do is show you some simple hints and tips that will enable you to start to achieve your goals and hopefully even better than that. But let's kick this off with what, what do we need to do to achieve this? And I like the idea of if we're prepared to achieve it, we've got a chance of doing it. If we hope we break 90, that's probably not going to give you the same outcome. So preparation is, is really important for this. So there is a bit of a mindset that goes with it, but there's also some practical things that we could be doing also. So the first practical thing is energy. So in my golf bag, I've got some water. We've actually got three bottles of water in here. I've got a little uh, protein bar and I've, I've got myself a banana. And quite, if I was playing in a tournament and knew it was gonna take over four hours, I'd also might even have a, maybe, let's say a, a tuna sandwich on brown bread or something like that. But certainly energy is important. So make sure that you've got your good stuff with you. Probably not chocolate. Um, the, the issue with chocolate is you get these spikes uh, so you get a bit of a high once you've had the adrenaline rush and then it goes back down underneath the, the sugar rush, should I say, not the adrenaline. But then we get this little dip again, which what do you think that might do to your mental state? So we get these highs and then we get the lows rather than being more constant. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that you've got some stuff in your bag that's going to supply you with the energy over the next four to five hours. So there's tip number one. The next thing that we should have done uh, before we even step onto the tee is just a few warm-up exercises. Um, I'm doing it here near my golf bag, I'll get a little bit closer. So the first thing that we're, I would highly recommend you do is obviously the dance to golf for those who've seen how we start to move. So here we're actually naturally um, using the body correctly, which is what it would do in the golf swings as a turn right and a turn left and the weight shift and all the other things that go with this one. So there's number one. I definitely wouldn't be doing this <laughs> because that's not really what we want to be doing in the golf swing. That's tilting and, and reverse pivoting. So turning this way and this way is a good thing. Another thing I quite like to do is one foot forward, one foot back. Gentle stretches this way swap the feet over, do something the opposite way, and repeat that three or four times, um, that simple exercise. And then again, another thing that I quite like to do is I'm gonna lift my right leg and I'm gonna turn right, and I'll swap over. So this is helping with balance and coordination. Yeah, and doing a few of those, a little bit of stretching, just kind of loose, trying to loosen up the back, trying to get those hands nice and low. I'm not bouncing to do that. I'm just stretching, just letting gravity take me lower to the ground. Can't, can't be a bad thing. Um, if you've not had chance to go to a net to warm up, but you, you know, you need to get onto the tee fairly quickly. Um, what I like to do is I just need to get my, my muscles going. So I tend to grab two clubs, even three sometimes, depending on how I'm feeling, and just start to swing them nice and gentle. Just starting to warm up the bigger muscles. So those simple little things to help you warm up are, are massively going to benefit you uh, before you even step onto the tee if you've not had time to go and hit any shots in the, in the net or on the driving range. Okay, 
So what we'll talk about next is another thing that you should be doing before you get out onto the golf course. So I've now arrived near the first tee, it's just, uh, just over in this direction, and I'm now on the putting green. Um, absolutely vital that you go and hit a few putts before you go and play. So the reason for that is just to get an understanding of the speed of the greens. Um, if we're going to break 90, it's actually fairly simple. And what I like to do is work from the green backwards rather than from the tee to the green. So if we're on the putting surface, and if we can guarantee we're not going to take more than two putts per green, that's going to give us an idea of how many shots it needs to take to get to the green. Okay, so I'm on the putting green, and what most people do, they'll go straight for a hole. So I'll choose this one here. So, so normally they go straight for the hole, get three or four balls. And if they miss the first six balls, you start to get a little bit downhearted already. You think, oh, this is going to be a bad putting day. But actually, I, I would highly recommend you don't do that to start off with. What you want to do is get a feel for the pace of the green. So I'm going to put, I'll go this way just, just so it's easier to see. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just, got, I've got three golf balls here, I'm just going to put them to the fringe of the green. So I'm not going for any particular target. I'm just making my normal setup. And I'm just getting a feel for the pace of the greens. So I'm trying to get these as close to the fringe as possible. Now those three golf balls, in fact I'm going to show you, now, there they are, all pretty close to each other right on the fringe of the greens. So I'm starting to get a feel for the speed of the greens, which is vital. So if you go out onto your golf course cold and let's say yesterday you played last night and they hadn't been cut and then you've played this morning they've been cut and rolled, they're going to be a lot quicker. So you just need to get used to the pace of the greens. So that would be my first thing. And what I would then do is start to practice some longer putts to the fringe of the green rather than to the hole again because we've become obsessed with trying to hold the putt rather than making the correct putting stroke. Now as we're going to go to the first tee. Okay, so you've done your preparation, you've got, made sure you've got your energy um, supplements in your golf bag. We've, we've got used to the speed of the greens, we've warmed our body up. Now on this hole, let me just describe to you what's in front of us. So here is a, it's a 198 yard par 3. So quite a, uh, quite a long hole for the first hole. Now, we're trying to break 90 here, so we're not trying to shoot sub 70, we're trying to break 90 here. Now, if we're good, if we, we can almost guarantee that we're going to two putt, we're on a 198 yard hole, do we need to get it there in one shot? If we can get it on the green in two and two putts, we've made a bogey and we're on, we're on track. So, very normally what people are going to do is grab the driver or whatever they use on this uh, on this length of hole they'll they'll hit it and then if it goes offline over here there's a few trees out to the right there's trees out to the left if you're off center here by too much you have got a very difficult approach shot to the green now what we want to do is make this as easy as possible so what i've done because don't forget we're trying to break 90 here not trying to shoot a phenomenal golf score so I've got a 7 iron here, I've chosen a 7 iron, nice easy club for me to use, I've, uh, I've got my tee, now I don't actually use a glove, since I started easy swing coaching, I found it more beneficial for me not to use a glove, I've got more feel when I do that, I'm not saying don't use a glove, but I've actually, I've really benefited from not wearing a glove, so, but if you, if you have, if you do wear a glove, make sure it's not old and battered and it's got holes in it and it's all filthy because that will start to, um, you're going to have to tighten your grip a little bit more with that because you're trying to compensate for the state of the glove. So make sure your glove is in good order. So that's number one. So we're teeing off the yellow tees here. Okay. 
So I'm now just going to figure out where I want my golf ball to go. So uh, there's quite a big tree up on the left there. I want to go a little bit right of that. The green, you probably can't quite see from the camera, but the green is in this direction over there. So I'm just going to go a little bit left of the flag. I'll just play my shot. Now that ball has gone slightly to the right. I'm in kind of the edge of the trees, but let's go up there, find out where it is, and then we'll show you the next shot. Okay, so I found myself, I'm kind of in the trees, but not, not too bad, to be honest. I've certainly got a nice free swing from here. I've got about 40 to 45 yards to go. Hopefully from here, you can just see the pin, which is, 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 is just this side of the tree. Now, very, very normally what you see people do from here, I've got 45 yards, I'm going to hit a sand wedge. But if I do that, the canopy of the tree is going to get in the way. So I need to take that out of the equation. So I'm going to play a shot that's going to land short of the green and hopefully run onto the green. So my sole aim here is to find the green with this shot. Um, so I want a club that's going to go fairly low. So I'm going to use, um, I think I'm going to choose a six iron. The lie is not too bad, so I'm just going to grab a six and I want to play a low running shot. So if we want the ball to come out low, we don't necessarily need a lot of loft on the golf club. So what I'm going to do in my setup, I'm going to place the ball slightly further back than normal. I'm just going to push my hands a little bit ahead of the golf club just to de-loft it a fraction to guarantee that it doesn't go up in the air. And then you might not see it clearly from when I play the shot, but from here, my sole purpose then is to just turn through. I'm just gonna move my weight in the direction of the target. The last thing I want to do from here is lean back and try and put some loft back on the golf club because then the canopy comes into play. So I'm just gonna play this shot now. I'm not really going for the pin. I'm gonna go a little bit left of the pin because there's an awful lot of room over in that direction. So I'm gonna line my club up where I want the ball to go. And I'm gonna hit it to the left. And that's just run through the little bit of semi-rough up the little bank and it's finished on the front of the green probably about 15 feet away so let's go and play that one okay so here i am on on the green um, this put breaks a little bit from left to right um, what i've done before i've changed the camera i've actually walked past the hole and looked at the line from the other side back to this way but i'll show you that on a on one of the, the next holes so all i've got to do now is two puts so my sole purpose for this putt is to get the ball as close to the hole as possible. Okay, so that's gone to a foot. I'll just finish that one off. Okay, so that's the first hole played. It's a par three and I've just made a very comfortable four on that one. So I'm only one over par to start off with. So this is part one of a three series video that we're making about breaking 90. If you click on the link below, that'll take you to video number two. Mm -hmm.